This video is for section 8.4, multiplying special cases. It's going to piggyback off of 8.3, so make sure you have done those notes before doing this lesson. The objective for this lesson is that we can find the square of a bino binomial or we can find the product of a sum and a difference. So that means we're going to be multiplying. Squares of binomials have the form of a plus b quantity squared or a minus b quantity squared. I'm going to show you how to simplify this product, a plus b quantity squared. The picture, the area model, is shown at right. So what we want to do is rewrite it twice because of that little 2 in the exponent. And we can use the FOIL method or the table method that we learned in the last section. So first we're going to multiply and we'll get a squared. Then we get ab. Then we get ab or ba. It does not matter what the order is of those letters or variables. And lastly we get b squared. Hopefully you remember from last section that the middle terms are almost always like terms. So those are little ones in front. So we get 2ab and the outside two values always come down. So this is the simplified form of a plus b quantity squared. Now what's so significant about that is when a product is in this form a plus b squared, you can basically, if you memorize this circled form that I just showed you, you can just plug the numbers in and do the operations and you'll get your answer. You'll get the answer quicker. Um, so in this lesson I'm going to show you a couple shortcuts. And if they don't click with you, then just use the methods that we learned last chapter. I will be, sh sorry, last section. I will be showing you both ways so you can choose which one works best for you. Take a moment and just look at the key concept box below. Here's a couple examples. Um, take a look at the bottom right corner, x plus 4 squared. What you do is you take the x and you square it. You take the 4 and you square it. And then you just double... 4 times x, which is the numbers in the set of parentheses. And then you get x squared plus 8x plus 16. So there's a little shortcut. Um, the other one I'll show you real quick. Take the x and square it. Take the negative 3 and square it to get a positive 9. And then take the x and the negative 3 and double it. So we're getting x squared minus 6x plus 9. So the shortcut works. If you don't grasp these shortcuts, then I would be totally fine with you using the table method or any other method from last section, 8.3. So let's take a look at our very first example. I'll show you the shortcut first and then I'll show you the table method after. First thing that you want to do is take the x, the first term, and square it. Leave some space. Take the last term and square it, and then double the product of the numbers inside. So we get x squared plus 16x plus 64, and there's the answer. It's nice and quick. Now I'll show you the table method. Since it's quantity squared, that means the dimensions of the box are the same on both sides. So x times x is x squared. x times 8 is 8x. 8 times x is 8x. And 8 times 8 is 64. Combine the values in the diagonal so we get x squared plus 16x when adding plus 64. And that's the exact same thing as above. Let's look at part B now. I'll show you the shortcut once again. Take the first term and square it. Take the last term and square it. And in the middle, you're going to subtract. Subtract two times the terms in the parentheses. So whenever there's a minus in the middle, that minus just gets brought down to the next line. So now 2m quantity squared is 4m squared. Negative 2 times 2 times 3 is negative 12m. And negative 3 squared is positive 9. So the answer is 4m squared minus 12m plus 9, using the shortcut. 
Now I will show you the table method. Let's multiply and we get 2m times 2m is 4m squared. 2m times negative 3 is negative 6m. 2m times negative 3 is negative 6m. And lastly, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. You'll notice that the diagonal is, they're like terms and they're also the exact same number. So when you add them, you get negative 12m. So 4m squared minus 12m plus 9, and that's the exact same thing as what we got above. So you just learned how to square a binomial. Now let's look at an application problem. A square outdoor patio is surrounded by a brick walkway as shown in the picture. What is the area of that walkway? Step 1. Find the total area of the patio and the walkway together. So basically all we have to do is just take this times this, the dimensions. Remember, a square just means the sides are all equal, equal to each other. So x plus 6 squared, and we're going to use the little shortcut or the table method, your choice. Take the x and square it, leave some space, take the 6 and square it, and then double the x and the 6 combined. So 6 and x. That means we get x squared plus 12x plus 36. If you're still not comfortable with that shortcut method, feel free to use the table method and we will get the exact same thing. So we just found the area of the whole figure. What we're trying to do is find the area of the red walkway only. So now we're going to have to find the area of the patio and then subtract that area from the total area to find the area of the red brick walkway. So let's take a look. The area of the patio. Well, it looks like it's just x times x because the dimensions are x on both sides. So the area of the patio is just going to be x squared. That's nice and simple. Now to find the area of the walkway, just as I mentioned, this is how you find it. You take the total area and subtract the area of the patio. So basically we're just going to have to combine like terms now. So this value is going right there. So we have x squared plus 12x plus 36. And this value is going right there, so we have minus x squared. These guys are like terms, and conveniently, they cancel each other out because one's positive and one's negative. So the area of the red brick walkway is 12x plus 36. And there's our answer. Feel free to rewind if you need to see that example again. We're going to skip example three and also example five. So just write in your notes, skip, and then see textbook if you're interested. You will not be held accountable for this problem as well as example five. Okay, if you can recall from the previous lesson, we learned how to use FOIL and I showed it right here for you. So you can look at it again. Y times Y is Y squared. Y times negative 3 and Y times positive 3 is 3Y minus 3Y. And then lastly, 3 times negative 3 is minus 3 squared. So the middle two terms cancel out and we just get Y squared minus 3 squared. So this is another shortcut that I will be showing you. It's really nice. It makes things quicker. And again, as I mentioned before, if you don't understand it, you can use the table method or something else if you prefer. So let's take a look at this example right here. x plus 2 times x minus 2. Because it's in the format of plus same number minus same number, 
what you can do automatically is just get rid of the middle terms. So basically what you're doing is you're just taking x squared and the 2 squared and you're subtracting them. And the reason why you're subtracting them is because a positive times a negative is a negative. So it turns out we just get x squared minus 4. All right, example four. And conveniently, they tell us what to do in each step. And I will be showing you a couple of different ways, the shortcut method and the table method. So write the original product. Identify which terms correspond with A and B. So this is the A and this is the B always. So a is equal to x to the third and b is equal to 8. Now in order to simplify this, what you're going to do is just take the a and square it and take the b and square it. So take the number x to the third and plug it in, take the 8 and plug it in, and now we just have to figure out what each one is squared. Remember we're multiplying right here so we get x to the sixth and we get 64. So x to the 6 minus 64 is the answer. Now just in case you were lost, I'd like to show you the table method. So write this on the side where there's some free space. And label the sides and multiply. x to the 3rd times x to the 3rd, remember adding the exponents so we get x to the 6th x to the third times 8 is 8x to the third. Negative 8 times x to the third is negative 8x to the third. And negative 8 times 8 is negative 64. Conveniently, the diagonal terms are opposite, so they cancel. So we get x to the sixth minus 64. And that is the exact same thing that we got in the shortcut method just a moment ago. So like I said, you can choose which method works best for you. Feel free to pause here if you need to. As I mentioned before, we are skipping this and just write C book for the work. That completes our lesson. Feel free to try this lesson check for section 8.4. If not yet, you can try the 8.3 lesson check. I will be checking that tomorrow. Have a good one.